He's our hero. Yeah. He's the guy. He's the best guest we have. We look forward to you coming in. How are you, bud? I'm good, man. I'm, I was excited to be here. It's been a minute since uh, you know I've been able to do some stuff like this, so thank you. Do you care to comment about your Oscar snub? Because you had, listen, the show loved you in the movie. Oh, yeah, we all watched it. And then you didn't get an Oscar, no nomination. We were a little irritated about that. Interesting. I, I, w- I didn't even know the Oscars happened. So uh, Well, you got snubbed. We're letting you know right, this morning. Okay. You've been snubbed. Was it, when did they happen? I'm not sure. I, a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. Did they happen or they just came out with nods? No, no, they were there. No, they, they were yeah, like in a they, little room. Mm-hmm. They yeah. were. Oh, that's true. It was real, the ratings were terrible. It was different. Because if you'd have been there, hey, we did get good uh, ratings on Rotten Tomatoes with our, with our movie, by the way. <laughs> it's awesome. like, eight, like 80, 90%. How were you pretty nervous? I, the movie was called Our Friend. If you guys aren't familiar, Jake played like a a friend. Of, I played a friend of the friend, right? Um, and basically, in short, the movie is a true story about a family um, going through a very difficult time. The wife has terminal cancer. Yeah, like heads up, it's sad. Ninety five percent positive right now on Rotten it, Tomatoes. It's an incredible film. Mm-hmm. It's a true story, and I think when people see it, especially in a time like right now, where Everybody's kind of dealing with reality, you know, and, and, and that's something that I think mo- a lot of movies out there is like takes you away from reality. And this one really brings you back home to what it is. And uh, yeah, good. and it's about friendship and there needs to be more of that. Did you feel like with your character, though, that like you're like, oh, man, do I kind of have to be this like, totally douchebag? Uh, yeah, I was to- yeah. I was, can you say that on the radio? Yeah. I was that. I was totally that. And, and when I read it, that's kind of how I was scripted or mm. casted. And then I even questioned like, myself because I was like, perfect. did they cast me because <laughs> right. I am a dude back? <laughs> you know? Well, you did a great job. Yeah. Well, yeah. I see, I mean, it uh, comes naturally. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah. comes so honest. Are you, are you going to do more? Has anyone reached out and been like, hey, let's do some more acting? Uh, are you pursuing that? I am not pursuing it. Maybe I should. But like, I have had people reach out since then. And um, I would do it again. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. You have nine number ones now. Barefoot Blue Jean Night, Alone With You, The One That Got Away, Anywhere With You, Beachin', American Country Love Song, I Was Jack, You Were Diane, Homemade, Made For You. Of the nine number ones, which one was just, it took the most work to get there? This one. Yeah. This one. And, um... And, and again, man, thanks to you guys for this. You guys have been, like, praising this song. Before it was ever a single, you guys would ask me about it when I was on, this, on the show. And um, my fans out there, like, since day one, when other songs were singles and I'd play this song on the road, people just would go incredibly crazy for it, and they related to it. And then my team at Big Loud, I mean, in an entire year where I couldn't visit radio and I couldn't get out there and play, they got this song to the top. So I think for all of us, it's like a big win for everyone that was like, I believe in this song, and y'all are, y'all are those people too. So I'm very thankful for y'all. This is the hardest working one. I, yeah, honestly, man, I think the next one will be the hardest yeah. working one. Every one is a little bit harder than the last, and you think it gets easier, but like it doesn't. That's why every one is so special that you that you have. Man, do you miss like, just playing for people? Like, Are you pumped to get back out there? I'm really pumped to get back out there. Um, that's That's why I do this. That's why I started doing it. And I tell people that all the time. Like, this has been an odd deal. People have been like, are you all right, man? Like, you know, you know, you haven't been working in a while and I know it's tough on you probably financially and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, never in my life, even back when I didn't have money, like I ever really worried about finances because I just like to play guitar and sing. And so this time around, like, yeah, I'm in a different place in life. I've got more responsibility than I did when I was 24 years old, but I still know in my heart that when it all gets back to where we can get out there, which we're doing now, Music is what fulfills me. So, uh, yes, long answer to your short question. I miss those people, and I miss that's what makes me feel rich inside is like someone smiling or singing along or relating to that last song. And that's to me what's cool. I have to ask how your daughter's doing. She's in the hospital, Paris. How, what's, what's happening? Yeah, she's all good now, thankfully. That's one thing you kind of learn in the hospital is like, what happened? Okay, so we, she had what we thought was a cold. And um, she just kind of runny nose, couldn't breathe. She has bad, uh, a lot of people out there might know about this. Children with skin eczema have like this triad of skin eczema, allergies, and, um, and asthma. It all correlates. And so when one's, you know, heightened, the other one's heightened. And her skin was getting really bad, and she, it was itching a lot. And the next thing you know, she literally could not breathe, like just stopped breathing. And... Uh, we had to rush her to the hospital. I mean, she was, it was bad. And then they wanted to keep her overnight because she, her levels weren't high enough to go off on her own. But uh, it's weird when you see a little two year old that's not at the point yet where she can really say anything and tell you how she's feeling um, on her second birthday, like in the hospital. But man, I will tell you this I had more people reach out to me, like 
other artists, other songwriters, people like y'all. And it makes you realize, like, in moments where you're super scared, like, people are there for you. I mean, really. Like, because I thought I felt alone. And then I would walk, I walked in Vanderbilt and I'm looking at all these other parents that have their children in there too. And you're kind of like frustrated. You're like trying to, you, you think, like, I don't know. I just had this feeling like I walk in, like, the security guard's like, sir, you need to check your temperature. <laughs> I was like, you know, I just wanted to like get mad at him. Be like, wait, my daughter. But I get it. Everybody's doing their jobs. And Vanderbilt was incredibly uh, helpful for us. But just the people in general that reached out to us really made it a lot easier on Erica and I because uh, we felt kind of lonely in there. You and Erica are, are getting married. Are you planning a wedding yet? Do you I knew you were going to ask this question. Yeah. I, and I knew that I was going to have But you I knew opened to come up with an answer. You opened the door. <laughs> you mentioned Erica. That's my cue to go, okay, speaking of Erica, what's, what's happening? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're getting married, man. I mean, I gave her a ring. We're gonna get married. Uh, <laughs> what do you want from him? I mean, we know that part. But that, I know. Right. But that's the thing, though. There's like, hey, man, I, I did it. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. Like, I love her. We want. We definitely want to get married. I mean, but this whole past year has been. I mean, when I gave it to her, part of it was because all of 2020 was just like this weird year that no one. Under, and I wanted some happiness out of it because, it, like I told you, even though we weren't on the road, like I was really happy, like at home with my children and my and Erica and. That's the first time in my life that I've had time, like, multiple days in a row at home. Because before, it's easy when you're, like, come home for a few days and you have that, like, lovey-dovey relationship and you're like, see ya, I'm out. Then you come back three <laughs> days later, you know what I mean? But when you're around someone 24-7 all the time, if you guys can still be in love, like, after that, and I guess it's meant to be. So we're pretty good. Like, we don't really, we don't fight or anything like that. So we're going to get married. You don't fight. Come on. No, we do on okay. stupid stuff. All right. Like, I got in a really, like, I'm a I'm OCD, like, bad. And so I was just mad the other day. I started cleaning out our uh, cabinets, and there was like seven, I counted, 17 cans of cream of mushroom soup. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. I've never bought a can of cream of mushroom soup in my life, and I can't remember the last time that Erica cooked anything with cream of mushroom soup. And so, but my point is, if we're going to fight, it's over stupid stuff like that. I'll be like, why do we have 17 cans of cream of mushroom soup? <laughs> She's like, well, I was going to make that chicken dish. I was like, 17 times that you didn't? You know what I mean? She's like, why do you have to be like that? Why can't you just... I'm like, so that's the fight. So okay. It's not like knockdown, drag out fights. Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. the answer is TBD. To the wedding. To be determined. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And you fight about dumb... I mean, the only stuff Caitlin and I really fight about is dumb stuff. If we have to be late to one more cycling class, we have to walk in you when it's dark. Late. Oh, my, I pull my hair out. I was hauling ass down here because <laughs> i knew i was late and yeah. i'm like i cannot be late for you late, i've here. never been i've home. never been late because i know i hear you talk about all the time how there's nothing worse to you than people that are late and you're right it, and, and i'm notoriously late for shit <laughs> He's but like i will now. not be late for your show because i don't want you being like you were here early. he's just another one of those guys you, you, know? you were here early we've only ever had one artist that was late late and i just said nope we're not doing the interview and that happened and it doesn't happen anymore Mm -hmm. The same with the show. When they used to be late, <laughs> what happened? Yeah, we so, said, well, well, don't or, come in, and then that's it. They went home. They called me like, I'm going to be five minutes late. Well, cool. We'll be, be on time tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <sighs> but it's all a respect thing. Like, if Morgan's going to get here on time, and Eddie's not. Who's the first person here? Bobby. Mike? Well, Ray Mundo. Because oh, he, yeah. He's well, first. Yeah. Ray, Ray is, like, the, the pillar right. who is making sure it's on, everything's on, <laughs> affiliates are getting stuff before the show starts. Yeah, he's but in this room, I'm usually the first one in the room. Okay. But that's okay. I'm supposed to be. You gotta lead by example, Le man. That's right. Kobe practiced harder than anybody. Anyway, yeah. uh, Jake Owens here. Yes. He's Kobe. Oh, yeah, okay. Kobe fan. Like Kobe fan. <laughs> I'm actually not a big Kobe fan. <laughs> But okay, how does this get turned on me, losers? Love we it. were talking oh. about Jake, and now it gets turned on to me. When are you going back out on the road? Uh, Do you know yet? Is it announced? End of the month. Really? I got a couple shows. At the, I have a couple shows at the end of the month. I'm super excited about just me and a guitar, um, and uh, that's I'm excited for that because I really picking up where I left off in the early part of uh, 2020. We were doing this what we called down at the Tiki Tonk tour, and it was just myself and my buddy Larry Fleet that um, is doing really well and. I took him out there and we just played our acoustic guitar for people in like little um like theaters and it was cool because i like you i mean you could say hey play this song and i'm like all right i play it and it was a bit of a diff difference from obviously years prior just playing big shows and i kind of miss those so i'm looking forward to starting the year that way and i say starting the year we're starting your, the year yeah your fiscal year yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah. well if you could not play one of your number ones which one would you cut like ever again yeah is like, there any, it, the, you have nine number ones here. If it's like, 
All right, you get to eliminate one, never have to play it again. I will tell you, though, I did do that a while back. I was, like, playing a show. I used to play shows all the time, and I couldn't wait to get to the single because, or the couple singles that I had that were hits because I'm like, people know these. And a lot of people, like, when you're playing songs, they, you know, you go, even me as a fan, you go to a show, and they're playing a song that, like, wasn't a single and you don't know that well. You appreciate it if you're a fan, but sometimes you're just like, I'm going to get a beer. You know what I mean? But I was playing a show, like, last year or whatever, and I was like, Damn, I have a lot of good songs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I finally got to the point, and I didn't mean that arrogantly. I was like proud of like proud yeah. of everything. I was just like, yes, I don't have to work so hard anymore. But uh, songs that I would so cut. none. You, you want yeah, no, if you, you have had the opportunity one. for no one to be mad at you, and you could just never play one of your hits again. Are there any you, you look at and you're like, I have to play this again? Dang. It. Are you good with all of them? Uh. People really like Eight Second Ride. Yeah, I hate good. that song. Yeah, yeah, we love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We like yeah. it when you grunt. We like I'm it when you grunt. I'm on up inside. With Come on! Come, Come on! on. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a jam. That I, was, I Let's swear, play it now. I wrote it uh, when I was 18 at Florida State University. <laughs> hey, hey, back there, at Florida State. Yeah, and, we, we played that one. We liked that. And one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wrote it at, when I was 18. And my brother, I told you this before, but he used to have a. Uh, he used to keep his like dip cup. He's dip like in the center console of his Jeep. And every time I'd get in his Jeep, he would say, "Watch out for my cup, man! Don't don't knock that over." So for him, when I wrote this song, because at the time I was writing songs for girls, I was listening to a lot of John Mayer and Dave Matthews at the time, <laughs> and uh, I was writing all these like love songs, and um, Jared's like, you have to write songs for guys. So I was like, all right. And I was like, climb on up, but honey, watch the cup that I've been spitting my dip inside. And I thought it was brilliant at the time, and now every time I sing it, I'm like, God, here comes that <laughs> stupid line. <laughs> you people that? love that song. You're probably mad at me for, for hating it now. Every show you play it? Every show. Yeah, good. Yeah. That'd probably be irritated if he didn't that's my favorite yeah nah top three not favorite but i think maybe top three because i know it drives him crazy Eight second ride <laughs> yeah i think that's three. more i think you've never said that but uh, we like playing it on the show and just gr- just come on come on with it yeah. do you do that though every time absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah I, I can never recreate the, the perfect come on though never we we play a game at my house like who which person would you let babysit your kids and we don't have kids yet but we it's probably soon right in the next year or two years or so. And the one that we're stuck on a lot, because I'm going to ask you this too, the one that we're stuck on a lot is the debate between Raymundo or John Party. Babysitting if we had a kid. Like, who would we leave our kid alone with? Ray or John Party? Why would you ever leave your kid with well, John Party? It, well, it's, it's like, uh, what's the game <laughs> where it's like you pee out of your nose and poop out of your mouth? Would you rather? Would you rather? You rather? It's like if you, were ha- if you had a kid and you had to leave them with one of the two, Raymundo, close friends with both of them, or John Party, we have all picked John. Now, Interesting. Of your country artist friends, <laughs> who would you leave your kids with? I would definitely, I mean, first off, my house is clean as hell, and John Party's always got dirt on his boots, so okay. I would never, never want to have my John. own. That was a stupid joke. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we got it. You got it, though. Okay. <laughs> that was quick, though. Let's go. Uh, but I don't know. I'd have to say Raymundo, just based off the like what you just said a minute ago. He's a pillar. You know what I mean? Uh, like, well, I want my child to be around somebody that's Here's the thing about Ray, society. though. When Ray leaves, it's... He's not? Mm-mm. If Ray is texting me anytime after about 5 p.m., he's usually had a few seltzers. Hard <laughs> seltzers. Yeah, which of your friends, though, do you trust? To, Some claws? To, yeah. to, which of the, your friends do you trust to babysit your kids, though? What country artist would you say, hey, come over, I trust you? Ooh, like, to, you're in a pinch. You have to call an yeah, artist. Yeah, I have to call And it has to be somebody we know. country artist yes. to babysit my kid? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Probably. I mean, Thomas Rhett comes to mind. He's got a lot of them. If he won't answer his phone though. Classic. Uh, nice. So yeah, probably I don't know. I don't know. That's a great, that's a <laughs> wow. really, that's a really good question. You think of one? Yeah, I mean All right, shut it down, boys. We're I don't know. Down. Reba? <laughs> <laughs> Reba be awesome with kids. You know what I mean? What would Reba answer your call? Do you have Reba's cell phone number? I don't, but I bet she would if I could if I could uh Do you have Dolly's cell phone number? No. But I have a letter of, um, like, sometimes saying no is a beautiful thing if it comes from Dolly. <laughs> and I asked her to be a part of this song that I just wrote, and she gracefully wrote me a no. But it was incredible because I got this uh, note with the big Dolly thing at the top, and she just told me how much she loved the song. And because my last name's Owen, it reminds her of someone in her life, the last name Owen. And uh, maybe one day we could do a song together, but right now she said she felt a little overexposed. Uh, but I was I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, I've asked many people to do things with me before, and they've been like, no. You know what I mean? But never she has someone yeah. thanked me for asking them, even though they couldn't do it. And I think that's a testament to why people love Dolly Parton. That's pretty cool. It's it's incredibly cool, and I it's mean, a cool it, story to tell too. And it just, makes us like Dolly even more. 
if that's she's possible. just, I mean, that that's why when you heard that story about her saying no thanks to the statue that yeah. someone offered mm-hmm. her, she's like, maybe at a different time. But those are the kinds of people, like, when you ask, like, who would you want? That's why I want my kid to be around someone like that because they, they learn from someone that's an actual real person and it's not like they're just babysitting because they're a star. You know, like, I think Dolly's more of a real person than she ever is a star, you know? Made for you is number one. Home, homemade, two, killing it. You're just killing it. Thanks, again. man. You guys are crushing it. All uh, y'all. enough about us. This is about you. Uh, you're ninth number one. Can't wait. <laughs> can't wait for the new music. Just, Thanks, man. Just a big fan. Love when you come on the show. Obviously, mm-hmm. appreciate that. Thank you guys for having me. It's always great to be here. There he is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why he's got such a. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, that just smile. When you said I know. That. I know. He's it. like, yeah. oh. He's like, I, of course. I don't know if I should believe <laughs> he's that. Talking through the grit in his teeth. All right, Jake no, Owen, man. everybody. There he yeah. is. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you, guys. It's about him. Show.